Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. As you may know, I've been optimizing my irrigation system here at home so that there'll be less charge for water because the rates have gone up a lot. So I finally finished optimizing and uh, then I found out that the electric rates have gone up quite a lot all of a sudden. So that's another issue to consider. Today, I'm going to talk a little about what I found out about optimizing my water irrigation system here in Southern California. The first thing I have to say, and there are only two things, the first thing that I have to say is that this is a relatively high wind area and I found when I put the tiny fourth inch tubing in with the little sprinklers on the spikes that if the wind was up then the water from the sprinklers would uh, fly away in the wind and not get to the appropriate irrigation area. So I looked around and, and tried all the different kinds of one fourth inch sprinkler heads on spikes and the one that works best in a high wind area is a dig bubbler, uh, the small size of the dig bubbler and I'll show you why. Okay, here is the bubbler in question. Um, you see how the water flows out like a, in a mushroom shape? And you get a lot of water in, gallons per hour in, for the seven or eight minutes that you can run the water twice a week. So the plants don't die. And uh, this is only found in dig, I found. You'll see that the top of the sprinkler is round and then the water shoots out the sides all around. So, so this is the one I recommended and here in Los Angeles it's only available at Home Depot currently. Here is the second tip. I got everything optimized more or less. I was still working on a few final details and then what I found is that because of the scarcity of water in my lawn apparently the gophers and the coyotes were coming in and gnawing holes in the irrigation tubing so that they could get the retained water that was inside the tubing uh, and then the each watering system would go bad because they had broken through the lines. I'll show you. Okay, so this is the fourth inch tubing and what I would find is that there would be tiny little gnaw marks in it. You could see the gnaw marks and then there'd be a hole in it and then the water would come shooting up out of the broken pipe. And then I would replace it and it would happen again the following week. And the other thing that I found is that in this type of tubing, this larger tubing, half inch I think, the coyotes would get in and they would, they have a different kind of a, a mark. It's not like tiny little teeth. They sink in with their fangs here. Can you see that fang mark there? And create a puncture hole in it. And the water shoots up when the irrigation system comes on and the rest of the line stops working. So I went to Home Depot in Lowe's and I talked to the men in charge of the aisles there in the irrigation and plumbing areas about this problem with vermin or rodents and, and coyotes uh, gnawing through the line and we talked over various solutions. One was the idea of purchasing cayenne pepper in bulk from a place like Amazon, like five pound bags, and maybe mixing it up with um, water and laying it on the tubing so that when they vermin bite the tubing they get a kind of a hot feeling and they want to let go of it. Um, but the problem with that is that because it's an irrigation system the water might wash over the cayenne a solution and then wash it away. So um, then I hit upon a notion of getting plastic trays of water, putting rocks in them so that the breezes can't s send them sailing away, and putting them right next to the one fourth inch uh, bubblers on spikes so that they would fill with water and then the wildlife would be able to drink that water and not have to, gnaw, to go through the trouble of gnawing through fourth inch tubing or half inch tubing. And I talked to the people at 
in charge over there of the aisles in the in the home improvement stores and they thought that might work in fact they thought it was a good idea I got the idea from walking through the mountains and the wildlife associations in times of drought like these will um, will add little water stations for the wildlife so so I thought some water stations maybe four water stations in my backyard might work and I thought also that if I put water stations outside the doors of my house, then the black ants might not try to invade my bathroom and my sink areas to try to get water because they need water in order to survive. So, so the idea is that the coyotes, the gophers, the birds, the, and the ants, all the insects could go to my, to my watering stations outside the house and get enough water to survive without actually coming inside, without breaking through the lines. And here's what happened. I'll show you. Okay, here's one of the trays that I found. They're sturdy trays from a fast food place, flexible plastic, heavy duty plastic, and I put four stones in them to prevent the wind from blowing them away and I put them right next to the sprinkler you see so by the time the sprinkler ends as it has right now the cycle of seven or eight minutes then the tray is pretty much full of water the sprinklers came on again today as they do twice a week and of course I walked the line because of all the trouble that has been incurring in the last three weeks and I found that after placement of the water containers at least so far there's been no gnawing of the lines and the number of ants inside the house has decreased so tentatively I'd like to suggest this possible solution in case you're running into the same issue of intelligent wildlife knowing where to go when it gets to your backyard and destroying your irrigation system. Oh yes, I have one other helpful hint for you with regard to your irrigation systems. The slope of my front yard is downhill to the street and I have some planting by the curb here. And what I had been finding for the last few weeks is that for the fourth inch tubing with the spikes and the sprinkler heads, it frequently, in fact every time, the head of the sprinkler would be missing when I went to check the lines every week. And finally it occurred to me that by, by loosening up the head of the sprinkler to maximize the spray, uh, the, the water was coming down the hill too fast and it would blow off the heads of the sprinklers when the sprinkler systems started up. And then I tried tightening those up a little bit on the downhill slope and all around and this week I haven't seen any sprinkler heads missing from my irrigation system. I'll show you. Okay, this is the area with four tiny sprinkler heads. See, there we have one, two, there's another one, and over here there's another one. And the heads, two or three of the heads will be missing each week so far. So then I, I tighten the heads up. And I added, as you can see, the water here so that it gets kind of full twice a week. And, and so this week, nothing bad has happened. It's all worked out just fine. So no matter whether it was water pressure or vermin that wrenched those, those heads of the sprinklers off, it's working out fine right now. Well, God bless you all. Keep you safe and be with you through all your days. Till next time.